Fallout is a great game series based on a nuclear war breaking out, changing the face of the world. But fret not, as the government had planned ahead and created many safe vaults across the land to keep people away from those nasty atomic bombs. These vaults were designed to open in an adequate amount of time, and, with the tools provided, repopulate the barren land. Sadly, when signing up for these places, what many didn't know is that they were set up for some sick social experiments and monitored in a master vault. Some were rather innocent, a vault that never opened just to see how people cope with indefinite enclosure, or one where individuals had drastic ethnicities and beliefs from one another to monitor how they'd cope living together. However, for every few interesting ones like that, there are many that carry a darker motive. So here's my top 10 disturbing vault experiments. Vault 92's experiment was to find talented musicians and expose them to subliminal suggestion by the means of white noise. This white noise contained subconscious messages that was hoped to create soldiers that could be controlled through form of hypnosis. The hypnosis was to create super soldiers that would be completely obedient and more ferocious than any normal human. Although the vault overseer was fully aware of the experiment's intentions, Professor Malleus, the lead researcher, was not. Although the experiment showed great promise to begin with, the most promising subjects soon began to display uncontrollable aggression. This same subject tore three people up in his rage, before the vault security team was able to stop him with 23 gunshots. As you could imagine, Professor Malleus was extremely confused by this sudden outburst. However, it is found out that the overseer had placed subliminal messages to measure out how much he would obey, how much damage he could do, and what it took to finally take him down. He even logged down how much he was impressed that it took 20 plus bullets to finally stop him, exclaiming, a whole army like that would be unstoppable. Things went sour when a number of subjects got overrun with extreme feelings of rage. One of the test subjects, Zoe Hammerstein, went mad due to the white noise with the diary logs degenerating as time went on, until a final sentence became barely comprehensible. All attempts to stop this rage ended up being futile, and eventually, over half the vault's population became violently unstoppable and began slaughtering the rest of the residents. The experiment for Vault 95 started out with great intentions. The vault members selected all had drug addictions prior to entering the vault. For five years, the vault was essentially a rehabilitation institute. The rehabilitation was a success, managing to seemingly cure all members of their addictions. As you can tell with all of these vault experiments by now, there's always a twist and this one is no different. After five years, a vault agent unearthed a pre-placed hidden supply of chems to test the reactions of the community. The drugs Psycho, Mentats and Jet can be found littered throughout the complex. The introduction of these drugs tore apart the family in which the population of the vault had created, with part of the community immediately giving in to their urges at the sight of these chems. It is then assumed that the inhabitants of the vault either overdosed or fled, as multiple bodies can be found in and around the stash. It also appears that the vault -Tec agent did not survive the violence, as his body and upgraded 10mm pistol can be found close to his terminal. An interesting note to add, Jet wasn't created until after the Great War, making it impossible for it to be in Vault 95 for the residents to use. While some may argue that Jet was brought in by the Gunners, a vault -Tec regional HQ terminal entry confirms the Jet was supplied by vault -Tec, and its presence in Vault 95 remains an inconsistent mystery with Fallout Cannon. Vault 
Vault 75 is located underneath the Maiden Middle School. This vault was presented to the public as a safe place for children in the school to take cover in the event of a nuclear war. When the war began in 2077, the children, with their designated families and teachers, entered in time. While all of the children were escorted to the atrium, the adults were separated and killed by vault security. The purpose of this vault was to enhance the gene pool of its selected residents to create stronger and more intelligent subjects. The surviving children were tested mentally and physically as part of the experiment. The children were raised, learning about the horrors of Uptopland, a nickname for the wasteland, and were told that they would be strong enough to venture out into the wastes and help the suffering people upon graduation. If they were intelligent and physically well built, they were either harvested for their good genes when they turned 18, or those with good intelligence and obedience were recruited to the vault science team after graduation. The others, who were deemed insufficient to the vault standards, were killed upon reaching the age of 18 prior to graduation. However, details found in various terminals suggest that even those who were graduated were killed after harvesting. The mission of Vault 75, above all, was the refinement of human genetics. In 2078, the original inhabitants of Vault 87 were taken to airtight chambers and exposed to a concentration form of the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV. Evidence suggests that the Overseer and his security guards were not aware of the Forced Evolutionary Virus' true nature, but were simply following orders from vault Tech. When the first Vault Dwellers were turned into super mutants, they, in turn, forcibly mutated the others until the remaining population were either mutated or killed. The Vault 87 super mutants are obsessed with the preservation of their brand new species. Since they are all sterile, they kidnap humans from all over the capital wasteland and bring them to the vault to be mutated. They have been doing this for nearly 200 years until their source of FEV started to run out. Because of the shortage of the green stuff, there are now super mutant bands searching all over the wasteland for a new source of the virus. Vault 112 was one of the last to be constructed. The construction started in November 2068 and finished in June 2074. It was intended for only 85 occupants, suspended in a virtual reality world for the indefinite duration of the vault experiment. The vault was built to house and tend to the needs of its overseer, Dr. Braun, creator of the Garden of Eden creation kit. Within it, Braun installed a virtual reality simulator and cryogenic system, initially containing several simulated utopias, the last of which being the Tranquility Lane simulation. The system should have permitted a select few to live a perfect life virtually, if not practically forever. What Vault 112's occupants didn't know was that once they entered the virtual reality pods, Braun would exercise complete control over the simulation. They had no means of leaving on their own. They became his playthings, completely at his mercy. Dr. Braun, after becoming bored of various simulated worlds, would proceed to virtually kill each of them. Each time after killing them, he would wipe their memory and resurrect them within the program, infinitely torturing them for an indefinite period of time. As part of the Vault experiment, psychoactive drugs were released into Vault 106's air infiltration system 10 days after the door was sealed. By 2277, the vault's interior was mostly destroyed and filled with insane survivors. 
The psychoactive drugs are still being pumped through the vault's air filtration systems, as evidenced by the player's visions suddenly shaded blue at the same time that the hallucinations appear. Information in the vault's computer terminals reveal that the Overseer knew that the inhabitants of this vault would be fired over drug testing, and he instructed his security personnel to tell those in the vault that everything was fine. At the very end of the vault is a cave-like area where skeletons and other items are located, including a mini-nuke, suggesting some of the vault dwellers may have been trying to blow their way out. Vault 108's experiment was to study conflict for leadership and power within the vault. So, here's the setting. The first overseer had a rare form of cancer that was expected to kill him within 40 months of the experiment's inception. With no other position of authority being assigned, giving the overseer discretion. Although the vault was scheduled to be shut for 38 years, the main power supply was planned to malfunction after 20 with the backup power supply intentionally insufficient to meet the vault's needs. There was also three times the normal armory stock supplied, as well as no entertaining records. Within the confines of the vault, there is a holodisc that the player can find in the cloning lab. Yes, that's right, there is a cloning lab, which gives a little hint as to what they did in there. That and there are two clones, both of which are called Gary. The hollow disc reveals that every time they cloned a guy called Gary, the clone became hostile towards anyone that wasn't a clone, with each subsequent clone becoming even more violent. After the 53rd clone had the same symptoms, the staff wondered what to do with all the Gary's duplicates. Gary 54 even injured a doctor during an examination. One of the entries in the holodisc states that they will be destroying some of the clones to make room for many more tests. It's not clear what happened next, however, it is clear that only the Gary clones survive. This vault was constructed in a small cave, but it's not known when the construction of Vault 77 began. The purpose of Vault 77 in the Vault experiments was to be populated by only one man and a crate full of puppets labelled P-13X US Government Issued Puppet Ration. As a study of the human condition in near complete isolation with a crate of puppets modelled after living beings as sole company. The vault door was designed to close automatically when the only Vault 77 dweller entered and only to reopen months later. The Vault 77 Dweller, later known as the Puppet Man, entered the vault on the 23rd of October 2077, when the Great War began. At the one hour mark, he was pounding on the door and shouting to anyone who might be listening that they had forgotten all other Vault Dwellers. By March 23rd, 2078, he had been reduced to sitting in front of the vault door and sobbing. On February 4th, 2079, he discovered and began to inspect the crate of puppets. By February 23rd, he had begun to act out simple scenes with the puppets. And by March 30th, 2079, he had created full roles and histories for them. The dog puppet being named Reverend Hound, and serving as both a sheriff and part-time reverend, and a grandmother puppet in which he named Grandma. He celebrated the birth of the king with Grandma on this day. But before going to bed, a vault boy puppet that he'd missed earlier began to talk to him. Probably a side effect of his isolation and descent into insanity, which the other puppets did not. One morning in 2079, the king was found dead, his head torn off in an act of regicide. When the puppet man confronted the most likely suspect, 
the Vault Boy puppet told him that they had, in fact, done it together and must flee before Reverend Hound came for them. The puppet man, accompanied by the Vault Boy puppet, opened the vault door, which was no longer locked, only to find a giant rad scorpion holding up a car in each claw. Faced with this, he decided to sleep on it before proceeding. By December 2079, the Puppet Man had managed to leave Vault 77 along with a Vault Boy puppet and a giant ant which he takes as a mount in the wasteland. Vault 77 was thereafter abandoned. Vault 22 had an experiment that didn't totally have it in for the vault dwellers from the get-go. I mean, things did go bad for them, but not in the way you'd expect in relation to some of these entries. Basically, this vault was filled with scientists dedicated with one goal in mind, to keep the entire population of the vault alive using plants grown within its confines. Upon entering the vault, the scientists brought three live specimens for testing. The common mantis, a plant similar to the Venus flytrap, and the bee morticana fungus, which was a fungus designed to kill most common pests. Now the thing with bee morticana fungus was that it was designed by Big MT, a privately owned pre-war defense contractor and research center. This thing was made in some laboratory, then shipped into the confines of a vault. I don't know to what extent it was experimented on prior to this, but it proved to be toxic and mutagenic to humans, turning them into spore carriers, a green creature with big green pointy plant things growing from their back. While the 118 vault dwellers managed to evacuate and make their way to Zion Canyon, most of them had been infected by the mutagen, which killed most of them off. After 11 months in Zion, the remaining 34 elected Jay Hendricks to be the overseer. His first order was the move out of Zion, and it is unknown what happened to them since. As with the vault, it got massively overrun with plant life, being covered with green everywhere. Many prospectors and mercenaries have attempted to locate the data the scientists left behind but so far, nobody has returned alive. The vault is open, but warning signs left outside the vault by people lucky enough to survive their initial encounter with the vault's inhabitants warn that the plants kill, and that one should not venture inside. Vault 11's tale is one of almost Shakespearean quality. Like with many of the other vaults, here lied a very twisted social experiment, one of noble sacrifice. Basically, every year, in order to save the population of the vault, one person had to be tribute and sacrifice their life by entering the sacrificial chamber. In this experiment, if they did not supply a sacrifice, it would result in the extermination of the entire population of the vault for its disobedience. You can imagine how out of hand things soon got for the dwellers of this vault. The residents set up a system where they would elect an overseer to reign in power for a year, before being sacrificed at the end of their term. The fact that it was the overseer's duty to be sacrificed was not influenced by the test itself, rather a system fabricated by the vault's population. One of the main contributing factors of why this was lies with the original resident's discovery that the overseer was the only person with knowledge of the yearly sacrifice prior to entering the vault, the rest of the dwellers did not. The dwellers soon lost all trust in the overseer and its title and soon birthed the election system that followed for years. From this system grew an almost political power in the form of blocks that would back the voting of certain members that they decided should be the next sacrifice, the most powerful voting block being the justice block. 
Prior to the very last vote to ever happen, Roy Gottlieb, leader of the Justice Bloc at the time, used this power to attain sexual favours with Catherine Stone. If she was not to comply, he would use his power to vote to have Catherine's husband, Nathan Stone, as overseer, thus cementing his fate in the vault. It is hinted that Nathan may have made enemies with the Justice Bloc due to an unusual winning streak during their poker games. To protect her husband, she complied, only to have the Justice Bloc nominate him anyway. This was not over, at least for Catherine. She ended up stalking and killing the lower members of the Justice Bloc. When she was captured, she confessed to her crimes. She also confessed to her reasoning, as it was not purely a hateful revenge, rather it would solidify her candidacy as Overseer. For her first act as Overseer, labelled Overseer Order 745, she dissolved the election process in favour for a computer system that would use a random number generator to select the next overseer. As you could tell, the Justice Bloc was fuming at this idea. Not only did they fear that one of the Bloc's members would be selected for sacrifice, but that by the time one of them did come to power, their political influence would be lost over the people of the vault. The Bloc staged an armed coup to force Catherine to reverse the order resulting in nearly all of the population being wiped out. This left only five people surviving. The final five people had nothing left to live for. Everyone else was dead. There is an audio log the player can find in Fallout New Vegas of one of the final survivors exclaiming that they're not going to sacrifice anyone anymore and that they would accept death in place of not having to sacrifice anyone. When the time to sacrifice someone was up, the following message was played. Congratulations, citizens of Vault 11. You have made the decision to not sacrifice one of your own. You can walk with your head held high, knowing that your commitment to human life is a shining example to us all. And to make that feeling of pride even sweeter, I have some exciting news. Despite what you are led to believe, the population of Vault 11 is not going to be exterminated for its disobedience. Instead, the mechanism to open the main vault door has now been enabled, and you can come and go at your leisure. But not so fast, be sure to check with your overseer to find out if it's safe to leave. Here at vault Tech, your safety is our number one priority. This would have been the most touching and sentimental message for the entire population of the vault had the preceding events not ensued. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's list. It's very fun to make, and if you did, leave a like. And if you want to see more video game trivia top 10s, click here for either my top 10 Silent Hill facts you may not know, or top 10 Resident Evil facts you may not know. And if you have a suggestion for another list, leave it in the comments. I'm open for suggestions now. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye!